Hello everybody and welcome to our fourth workshop on sustainable food tourism and today we're going to be talking about developing a sustainability strategy, policy and plan. To introduce ourselves, I am Andrea Nicholas, I am the Chief Exec of Green Tourism, we are a sustainability certification program, um, we've been operating for 25 years and I'm going to hand over to my co-host Sandra. Hello everyone, my name is Sandra Reid and I'm the director of Fear Consulting and my, uh, my consultancy business looks after hospitality and food and drink businesses of all shapes and sizes. So today's programme, we are going to have a, a very quick look back at what we have discussed in workshops one, two and three and I, I hope you were able to join us but if, if not, you can always catch up, catch, catch up with those online. Um, then we're going to talk about environmental strategy, environmental policies and environmental plans and what each of those mean and how to develop those for your business. We're going to look at some case studies and um, have some dis uh, and discuss staff engagement. And we're also going to look at how you can work with your suppliers on your environmental journey. We're going to have a top 10 tips. And Andrea is going to tell you about green tourism certification, and we'll leave you with a few things to think about and some homework to do. So in workshop one, we specifically looked at what food tourism is and how you can develop a food tourism business that is run in a sustainable way. Andrea discussed our impact on sustainability and creating a sustainable business. And she talked about the circular economy in Scotland and explained those processes. We looked at a number of case studies and examples of food tourism businesses. And we also provided you with some quick wins and advice. Particularly useful to take a look at is the advice we give around undertaking a baseline review. And there are several top tips top on getting started in your sustainability your sustainability journey. Workshop two really focused on the customer and we looked at how customer behaviour has changed, particularly in the last two or three years, how travel has changed and people's attitudes to travel have changed. We looked at their attitudes and their behaviour around the green recovery. And of course, we looked at food and drink, food and drink trends, customer expectations, customer preferences and how you can adapt to your business in that way. We looked at how you might meet your customer expectations and how you might market to your customer and share your green story with them. And finally, we ended up with some top tips on marketing your green story, so using social media in particular to engage with your customers. Workshop three looked at specifically our impact on the planet and how we can respond to, to changes in our business to address sustainability issues. We looked at net zero and uh, there's a link here to destination net zero, just to flag up to you that business energy, the Business Energy Scotland service will support SMEs on the path to net zero from April, 2022. So take a look at that website as it has some really useful information for you. We looked at some low cost improvements that you can make to your business without an awful lot of effort at all. And we looked at some case studies for, bus for businesses that are specifically doing that. Of course, we looked at best practice. And finally, we examined food waste and how you can manage your food waste, manage your menu and manage your costs. Thank you, Sandra. Great recap. And as she said, there's uh, all of these are available to look at on the sustain on the Opportunity Northeast website. So today we're going to talk about strategy, policy, and plan, and what it all means. And to start with, this, your sustainability strategy is really about your direction of travel. It's your vision. It's what you want to achieve, and why you want to achieve it, and why it's important to your business. And I'll talk through in the next couple of slides exactly how you might go about setting up and identifying what your strategy should be. Once you've got your strategy, you need to have a plan, an action plan of how you're going to actually deliver your strategy, what the timescales are going to be, the key responsibilities, how you're going to roll it out. 
And to underpin all of that, the strategy and your plan, is to have a sustainability policy. So a, a publicly available written commit, commitment, and it needs to be brief and to the point, and it's something that you share with your customers and your staff. So there's, there's three key areas that we're going to look at over the next few slides. And setting up your strategy is important. And I wanted to uh, introduce you to a, a, a model which is called the Plan, Do, Check, Act model. It's, it's very well recognized within business um, strategies and also especially with environmental strategies. And basically, if I talk you through the, three, the, the four sections, Plan is basically identifying those key issues, the, those measures in your in your business that are really important to you or are costing you a lot of money. And, and as part of that, identifying the key issues, you develop an action plan. You then do the doing, which is implementing the action plan, setting in place measures and, and identifying how you can address those issues and monitoring and collecting data, making sure that you understand what you're doing is actually having an impact on. And that's where the check bit comes in. So assessing the measures, recognizing what's been worked well, what hasn't worked well, where your team have managed to implement things and where they've had you know, challenges. And actually regularly reviewing those as you go through it and constantly speaking to your team, but also to your customers and your suppliers and getting them to help you out with your strategy. And the act side is, is really about making sure you get the right advice from um, external agencies that are out there through your network, network, celebrating the achievements that you've done, acknowledging that there may be times when you've not been able to achieve what you need to, but learning from those and establishing new goals and targets. And this plan, do, check, act model is continuous. So once you've done the acting, you go back to the planning and reviewing it. You might set new targets, update your action plan. Then you check what that, those new changes have done. And it's a continuous process. So that's how a strategy should work. In, and I just wanted to give you a few examples that you might want to have a look at um, online around what other organizations have done. And this is the Radisson Hotel Group. They've got a very strong commitment on responsible business. And again, on their website, you can see how they've approached that. And their strategy is all around people and community and planet and about caring, which actually resonates really well because it, that's the kind of approach that we take within, within green tourism. But there's also um, within Scotland, some great examples of how businesses have a, a, a adopted and are addressing their responsible travel and their sustainability strategies. Rabies is again a great example and have been working on sustainability strategy for many, many years. It's a core part of their marketing. And again, on their website, it's clear that they are about protecting the places that you love and that they want to make sure that their uh, tours have as little impact as possible. And then there are some really great sort of international brands like Patagonia, um, who are a B Corp registered uh, organization, which is again, a, a very high level sustainability uh, certification program. And that made a commitment, especially around kind of materials that they use within their, their clothing, that their social responsibility programs and where they, they do business and how they do business. So there's some great examples out there of how sustainability strategy can be implemented and just to make it a little bit easier for you, we have created a checklist of all the things that you should be thinking about when you're doing your strategy and, and the kind of elements that go into creating that. And you can use that as a, as a tool to use within your team or yourself to make sure that you've covered everything. All of the materials that we're going to demonstrate and, and explain to you today are available through Opportunity Northeast. Um, and I'll give you the contact details at the end so that you can get hold of those and start using them if you want to. So that's the strategy side of things. And you know, it's, it's, it's a process that you work through. But one of the key things that you should be looking at as part of your strategy is setting up an action plan. So this is actually identifying the areas you want to improve. And the most important thing is to look at where the biggest impact. So definitely what are the biggest costs for you for as a business? Um, and so that's often that's the energy side of things. And you might have a commitment to want to reduce the greenhouse gases in your, in your business, and in particular carbon, is something that a lot of um, organizations are looking at now. And for bigger businesses, it's starting to become a legislative um, obligation that they actually look at 
uh, measuring their carbon emissions, not so for smaller businesses yet, but it is something that Scotland, Visit Scotland and the Scottish Government have made a commitment to be net zero by 2045. So it's something that's going to be um, something we're all going to need to consider within our businesses. And once you've identified those key areas, it's then setting targets. And we like to use the word smart. Smart targets is that it has to be specific. It can't be vague. It's very much, we want to do this with our energy. We want to do this with our appliances. So it needs to be specific. You need to be able to measure it. You can't measure if you're not monitoring. You can't, sorry, you can't improve if you're not measuring. It needs to be attainable. So it needs to be realistic. It needs to be something that is achievable in time and also in budget um, is, is important. It needs to be relevant to your business um, and somebody needs to be made responsible for it. That's another R that you might use. And then time-based. So actually you need to have a, a, an idea of when you might implement these measures. So set smart targets, important. And as, as a key part of that is that relevance and that responsibility is assigning the task to the most appropriate person or the most appropriate department within your, your organization. Somebody who will drive the initiative forward, that might be yourself, or it might be a, a green champion within a different department. It might be um, somebody within your finance department is actually looking at this and saying, we need to look at reducing our running costs in this area. And also looking at having a green team and actually allocating it to potentially different individuals or different departments within the green team. Um, and as I said, that there is that general overall commitment within the country to look at net zero and that might, that might be a driver for you going forward. So setting up an action plan is important and then implementing it is a really key area as well. So, you know, if you're you know, failing to plan, you're planning to fail, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a need that a lot of people use within business. So looking at what you're doing and recording that key information, that measurability is really important, making sure that everybody who's got responsibility has access to the information and that should be part of your whole business um, plan going forward. Reviewed regularly, tracking it, and, and uh, you know, again, identifying the thing hasn't something hasn't worked, learning from that lesson and reflecting on it, and then deciding what you can take forward from it. And if something has gone well, again, recording that and, and making sure that it's something that you can do again. So implementing an action plan is a key part of making sure that you're successful in your strategy. And then the third element we talked about at the beginning was actually the policy. This is a publicly available statement of intent. Um, it should be very relevant to your business. It doesn't need to be hundreds of pages long. It's very much about what you are, what you're trying to achieve. And make sure that you don't use language in it that's something that you can't understand or that your team or you can't understand. You need to be able to explain your environmental policy to yourself and to your team and also to your to your guests and to your suppliers and it should have a commitment within it to continuous improvement and compliance with obviously with the law and environmental legislation and it's really something that you should be quite proud of and be quite comfortable to to promote publicly um, so have it available on your site or on your website use it within your social uh, media as well and uh, you know ways of how to write an environmental policy and what should be in it you know again it should be your own language but check out what your peers or your competition are doing what how they're explaining what they're they're doing within their business and getting help and i've put up on the website that our website here that's uh, zero waste scotland and they have a very large number of guides to help businesses they're not all specifically for sort of food tourism businesses but they will have things within it that are useful to you so they've got you know how to write an environmental policy how to conduct an energy audit how to deliver an environmentally sustainable event uh, how to you know, calculate your climate change uh, impact so lots and lots of, of support on that website and there are other resources, Energy Saving Trust, um, as Sandra mentioned at the beginning, they're taking over the business efficiency support as of the 1st of April. So if you need uh, access to loans, interest-free loans and advice, then that's the people to talk to. Zero Waste Scotland have talked about Carbon Trust. UK government has uh, good access. We do. Visit Scotland have a responsible travel website as well. So there's actually a lot of support out there and you need to tap into as much as possible. 
Um, in terms of the actual policy itself, we again have a checklist that you can use that gives you, a, you know, an idea of what should be in your environmental policy. And we have a template that you can use to start off with. It's, it's in Word, so you can adapt it. You can put your logo, your business name in there, your pictures of what you've done. Um, but it gives you some, you know, somewhere to start with and somewhere to start with um, and explain what you're doing. And, and it should be signed by top management and it should be dated and reviewed regularly. So that's some support there for you. I'm going to hand over to Sandra now and she's going to talk through some case studies. Thank you, Andrea. So I, I think we can all agree some great advice out there and uh, lots of it. So take, take a look at those websites that Andrea was speaking about. So thinking about environmental policy, uh, this is a uh, an example from a company called Heritage Portfolio, who are uh, caterers at the Royal Botanic Gardens Edinburgh, uh, the galleries in Edinburgh and, and various venues across Scotland. Um, you know, they're really a well-respected caterer. And, and this is their uh, corporate social responsibility page on their website. So you can see here that they, um, they do all the things that, that, that Andrea was, that was, talk, was talking about. They tell you a little bit about their business. They tell you about their, um, their activities and how they take, them, they take them seriously in terms of their impact on the planet. And, uh, and there are a number of, of other links there around purchasing waste management, their kitchen garden. And of course, they are, um, they're, they've got their badge, their green tourism um, accreditation badge there. So um, just in terms of the policy itself, um, that's the, the, the second part of the of the web page there headed up our environmental policy. A great example of a really focused and to the point policy. So um, addressing all the key items that uh, Andrea spoke about in terms of the tech, the checklist, they commit to meeting and exceeding all their legislative requirements. They address waste handling, they address waste reduction and recycling, and they tell us how they are working to recycle um, the, the waste that they produce, not just catering waste, but also their, their office waste and that associated with the events that they are involved with organising. Um, so they are looking at, at reducing the impact of their consumption on uh, raw materials, particularly water, electricity and gas, which we spoke about resource efficiency in the in the last workshop, if you want to take a look at that again. So um, again, looking to to minimize pollutants. And most importantly, I think they mention that they are they're looking to their employees, they're providing staff training in environmental issues, and they're they're committing to this and they're committing to guiding their staff towards um, towards implementing their their environmental policies, so um, and they're summing you know they sum up with you know with a commitment. Heritage portfolio will endeavour to increase environmental awareness and understanding within the workforce. Uh, so a great example of how this can be done, and it, it's on their website if you want to take a look at that. Here's another example that's uh, closer to home in the northeast. So Castleton Farm, we've actually spoken about before in, uh, in earlier workshops, and this is a, an extract from, from their website. Their, their website and their social media has a really good focus on their approach to sustainability, and it's clearly such an important part of, of, the, of their business and their, their approach to business and business development. So the policy here um, addresses their three main commitments. They want to lower their carbon footprint, they want to exercise regenerative, regenerative farming, and they want to reduce use of single-use plastic. So the information is really clear and concise. They talk about their solar systems, they talk about their electricity production and how they are producing more than they're using, and um, they, they, they actually are able to export electricity during the night and import it during the day so that it manages their demand for power over the day. So, so they've done a lot of work on that. Um, in terms of their, their 
fruit production, they produce fruit for nine months of the year. And I'm going to be talking about them later on in the workshop too. Um, so they reduce the, the need for imported fruit in, in the Northeast and really are cutting down on, on those food miles and, and that impact on, on, the, on carbon. Uh, in terms of their farming, so their, their approach is, is on, um, on improving soil health, they're always working with, um, with academics on improving soil health, and they are using regenerative farming techniques. Now, probably most importantly, single-use plastic. So if you, like me, love a punnet of strawberries or raspberries in the summer, we're all concerned about that use of plastic in the packaging for the fruit. So they have an, an approach that, at Castleton Farm, have an approach that nothing should be single-use. So the current plastic punnets, that the current fruit punnets that they're using contain a minimum of 80% recycled plastic and they're 100% recyclable. So again, really clear and concise information, but also the opportunity for customers to find out more if they want to. And there's a link to their sustainability report on their website. And I'd urge you to take a look at that. It's a really useful document uh, if you're looking for inspiration for your own business. So thinking about, um, about suppliers and partnering with suppliers, you can really benefit your, um, your supply chain, the greening of your supply chain by working with your suppliers on that. So some practical steps to consider here. Take a look at the Zero Waste Scotland business support and procurement support. They have some really great tips on buying resource efficient equipment. Um, and uh, you know that's really well worth a look. So some areas to consider. A really easy fix is things like office supplies. So how much stationery do you buy? How much paper do you use? Are you using recycled paper? Um, do you need to do you need to print? When uh, as often as you as often as you do, what's what ink are you using? So you know that's a that's a really quick fix for a lot of businesses. As is furniture and equipment. Look at the carbon footprint of the equipment and furniture that you're buying. Packaging, thinking again about, um, about Castleton Farm and the plastics use. Think about what, what, all, what other packaging you could use, whether your product's going in, is it glass, is it, is it cardboard, is it plastics, or is it something else? Um, food and drink suppliers, I'm going to talk about in the next couple of slides. And if you're building, um, look at the look at the building uh, materials that you're using. Um, energy resource. We've given a lot of information over the series of workshops around resource efficiency. Uh, cleaning materials. What chemicals are you using? Can you use an environmentally friendly chemical instead of the one that one you're using? How much water are you using? And how you can um, how you can partner. With, uh, with your water supplier to reduce that and how you can partner with your waste supplier. So some practical steps here, really think about what you buy. It's really thinking about where you are now, make a massive list of everything you buy and ask yourself, where can my suppliers help me? Who, who are your key suppliers? Can you speak with them? Could you look at alternatives? Look for certification. I'm gonna talk about that in a couple of slides and uh, monitor and review as you go along. So I wanted to think about some specific case studies in, in the Northeast where food and drink businesses, food, food tourism businesses and tourism experiences are working with their suppliers to really drive home that sustainability message and to, to work together to, re to reduce their carbon footprint. So there are a few different ways that you might partner with suppliers. And one of them is on, is on product. So a couple of really nice examples here of product partnerships. Forest Farm Dairy is an organic dairy and visitor experience at Canella just outside Aberdeen. So this business is operating on organic principles already and selecting suppliers is obviously key to their brand. So in selecting a coffee partner, Figment Coffee was a really great choice. So this is a roastery and coffee shop based in Aberdeen, and they have full traceability on the beans they use, working with growers to ensure fair working conditions for their employees. 
So Forest Farm and Figment Coffee were natural partners in this like-minded approach. So they've come up with this lovely, uh, lovely brand design too, and it's bespoke to Forest Farm called Fig in the Forest. And the artwork and design for the packaging was also done by local businesses. So really a whole collaborative approach there and really supporting the local community. And the, the second example I wanted to look at is a partnership between Smoke and Soul. And they're an Aberdeen-based barbecue street food and delivery business. And their partnership was with Big Beefy's Biltong based in Turriff. So the quality of the beef product was so important to both companies, and they're both really committed to local provenance and accreditation with Scotch beef and protect, protected geographical indicator status and certification in place. What I really love about this particular partnership is the messaging here on, on Instagram. It's really fun, it's really quirky, and it's totally on brand with both businesses. We spoke about this back in, in workshop two around um, your green persona and how you, how you demonstrate uh, to your customers that your green messaging is exactly the same as your, as, your, as your brand and you don't need to change that and you don't need to change your voice. And this, um, this partnership really indicates that a really fun Instagram message here. So uh, thinking more about uh, another way that you can so you can engage with your supplier is in is where they can support development and innovation. A couple of nice examples here. So Six Degrees North is an Aberdeen-based craft brewery, and they partnered in 2021 with the James Hutton Institute, and um, this project was to grow ho grow hops locally in Aberdeenshire. And and if you um, you probably know that hops aren't really native to Scotland, but they specifically selected a, a particular hop called the Dwarf Pioneer to suit the climate and to suit beer taste preferences. And they delivered a very fine lager here, a Vienna lager. Also a very nice design on the can, which does, was done by a local supplier. And they're sharing this story on, on Instagram, as, as you can see here. Um, and that partnership worked out um, very well for, for both parties. Um, the second example I have here is Cove Honeybees, and they're partnering with Castleton Farm, who I mentioned earlier. And uh, Cove's bees are supporting crop pollination in Castleton Farm's cherry orchard. Um, now, I didn't know this, but uh, there are double benefits here because the cherries apparently have a very early flowering season. And uh, this ensures that the crop is covered um, during this early season when normally there wouldn't be the, the, the same birds and bees around. Um, but it's also a great boost for the bees after winter because the food stocks are low at that point. Um, so great, um, a great partnership and uh, double benefits, as I said. So in thinking in very practical terms about how you engage with suppliers, there are some tips here on how to best work to get the best out of the, the relationship and make sure that your supplier is sharing your environmental objectives. There's an example here on the right hand side of a supplier screening questionnaire, which covers things like, do they have their own environmental policy? Do they have a sustainability strategy? And checking what their green direction is. And if it is go obviously, if you hope it's going in the same direction as your own. So we recommend that you use something like this when you're working with a supplier. Um, your regional food group uh, can support you to find uh, local partners and your regional food group in the Northeast is through Opportunity Northeast. You might want to create a specification for purchases for certain items that you buy in and look for accreditation like the protected Jeff geographical indicator that I spoke about earlier, things like Scotch beef or the red tractor mark for, uh, for farm product. These quality marks can really help assure you that you're working with a reputable partner. Awards are um, a really great, um, a great way of identifying who, um, who good suppliers are and where they might be a good fit for your business. And um, I think most importantly, it's really important to take a regular review of your purchases 
don't buy from necessarily buy from the same supplier for years and years and years without uh, without taking a review of do your needs and uh, are your needs and objectives being met by your supply chain and i think above all speak to your suppliers they're a fantastic source of information they'll want to tell you about their their innovation they'll want to tell you about their business and objectives and after all they are the experts on the products so another uh, element of of collaboration is uh, is in terms of your staff we we've talked about you about staff already and uh, and how important they are to to your team and i think that green initiatives are really good for team morale and um, the, the photographs here um, a couple of ha really happy teams the first is of glasgow convention bureau and uh, and they um, they're working together on green initiatives and the the team below who are absolutely a green team and their green polo shirts there and that's a hotel in york in york with their proudly displaying their their green tourism badge so um i think you know some tips here think about somebody in your business who could be a green champion there's there's usually someone in the business who's prepared to put their head above the parapet to say i want to i want to champion this i want to be the ambassador and they can take a bit of responsibility for the environmental standards in your operation it's much easier to deliver if you if there's a single point of contact that staff can go to to say, yes, I know Mr. X is my green champion and I, I know that's where I'm going to go for, for advice. Um, just as I spoke about with Heritage Portfolio, include environmental awareness training in your staff training programme. And think about just, you know, think ways that you can help your staff to be more green, encouraging car sharing, cycle to work initiatives, and making space, you know, it's a pra practical point, making space for cycle parking, making space for people to store their cycling gear, maybe making a, making a, a shower available so that people can have a shower if they've, they've either run into work or, or cycled into work in the morning. So some ideas there. And thinking about um, some case studies here, demonstrating good staff engagement to support sustainability in the businesses themselves. So I think we spoke about uh, Loch Lieben's Larder before in a previous workshop. They have a, a really good staff training programme, particularly on recycling practices. And um, they, uh, they run workshops and, uh, and team events every other week on a, on a specific green issue. They give briefings to their staff on energy conservation, lighting, water, kitchen equipment, making sure that, that taps aren't left running, making sure that kitchen equipment isn't put on in first thing in the morning just to heat up the kitchen and not to not being used for actual actual cooking. So all of these tips are, um, are given to staff and uh, Loch Lieben's Larder are really reaping the benefits of that. Um, West, Bure West Brewery in Glasgow is, is another business who really want to look after their staff and engage them in in the in the whole sustainability uh, journey of the business so their employees are called Westies and they receive tax-free shares after 12 months continuous employment so they actually own the business West Brewery is a business that is owned almost exclusively by its employees and that's maybe not something that we think of traditionally as being a, a sustainable approach but it very much is Angus and Oink is uh, a, re a diverse workforce is really important to this business and 75% um, 75, 75 of their workforce is female and 50% of them, over 50% of the management team is female. Um, Angus and Oink is a, is a business based in the Northeast and they make um, barbecue sauces and rubs and, uh, you know, their, uh, their voice, if you like, their um, their green voice is is great fun and um the their branding is is very on message with and very current so a, a, re, a very good business and i urge you again to take a look at their website thank you sandra some great examples there of what people can do and and uh, yeah re really good to always see what actual other businesses are, are actually up to um i wanted to just summarize with like the top 10 tips of of how to go about um, 
developing your strategy, your plan and your policy. And I think the first one has really been emphasized throughout everything that we've talked about today is about being very clear um, being very honest about what where you are now on your green journey and where you want to go to. So your policy should clearly state, you know, we, we've, we're, we've started our green journey and where we are now. And, and actually, we've got a plan in place to develop going forward. And that might have timelines attached to it and targets. Um, sharing with your team is really crucial. That staff engagement is really going to make such a difference in the success of your sustainability strategy and also that people within your organization get a full buy-in and, and, a, res and a, a responsibility and an ownership of, of the kinds of measures that you're asking them to do. Under, undertaking a baseline assessment is, is really quite crucial. You know, you really have got to know what you're currently doing. And we do find very much so that when we talk to businesses that they're often doing a lot more than they think they are. Um, and actually, so doing a baseline review will not only be useful, but hopefully it'll be uplifting in the sense that you, you will be able to see, well, we've already got quite a lot in, in place already and we've got something to build on. And, and, you know, understanding where your biggest impacts are, especially the costs around resource efficiencies is, is clear. Be also quite clear about your customers and what they want. So talking to your customers, um, in, in the second workshop, we talked about customers' expectations and actually engagement with your customers through your social media and through campaigns. Um, that's when you've got to find out uh, what, what your customers are actually interested in, whether it's to do with the biodiversity or the locality of your food or, or just wanting to find out more about the people that work with you can be part of your green story. So, you know, identifying what your customers are interested in and, and how to communicate with them, what's, what, what kind of messages they're interested in. Really understanding what your green persona is, so actually understanding what's important to your business and every business will be different. There is not just one system fits all. It's about what's important to you and your sustainability messaging should be something that reflects your business, not something that's necessarily an add on. It doesn't have to be written in a different language. It doesn't have to be something that's not on brand. It should be something very much about what you are as a business. And that links into your communications and making sure that the language you're using is not something that's jargonistic or, or something that doesn't sit well with your own brand and values and, and making sure that your social media reflects the language that you're using if you're going to be an eco business then use that throughout if you're going to be a green business if that's the word you want to use or sustainability is is the, the thing or responsible whatever the words are that you want to use make sure it's consistent throughout your media content plan and your signage and your marketing collateral that needs to be a core part of it Making sure that you're very transparent and honest and upfront is, and, and clear for your uh, anybody coming to your website, to your site, I think is also important. So having your policies and plans publicly available, and I'm not talking about things that are potentially confidential, but things that are around your aims and ambitions and your values and visions for the, for the business around sustainability is things that, that you can put on your website and on your social media. Talking to your suppliers, as Sandra said, is, is a core part of this. You'd be surprised how much they are looking at all of this because they are being um, encouraged to do so through legislation or because they know that's what they, their customers are looking for. So they can help you with your green strategy. They might have products and, and uh, appliances and equipment that you just don't know about and, and actually can help you with setting up your sustainability strategy. And then lastly, consider certification we've seen a number of certifications that relate to to food products and produce but there's also certification that you can go through for your own business and i'm going to move on now to talk specifically about the green tourism certification program um, this is a, a program that's been running um, it started in scotland in in 1997 so tw 25 years ago um, and it has developed beyond uh, Scotland and we're now in over 22 countries although the core number of businesses that we work with over 2,000 businesses are UK and, and Ireland based and we have nearly a thousand of those actually in Scotland and we do cover all types and sectors of hospitality and tourism as you would expect the sort of standard accommodation and visitor attractions 
but we do have a lot of food tourism businesses, whether it's eateries or we have food manufacturers, um, we're working with vineyards and distilleries, uh, a very wide range of, of, of food tourism businesses that have decided to go down the route of achieving a sustainability accreditation, particularly related to, to the tourism industry. Um, and it's something that you know, we're very proud to be working with those businesses. The Green Tourism Programme is built on three pillars. It's about caring for people, caring for places and caring for our planet. And we have 15 sustainability goals across those three pillars. As you can see, the, the people goals are very much about um, things we've been talking about in, in these webinars, you know, communication processes, raising awareness within your own team, but also within your guests and your suppliers working with a local community, maybe supporting a local charity or helping with a, a local schools with their, you know, planting their market garden. Um, but very much about health and well-being, again, of not just of your customers, but also of your team and making sure that, that they're well looked after. And looking at equality, diversity and inclusivity is a key part of, you know, caring for people. The place's goals are very much about how you work and how you help promote the destination, whether that's the culture, the heritage, the history of your business or of the, the local area, and how you're helping your customers experience what you're doing within your, your own food tourism business um, and, and other experiences locally to identify and, and, and experience the authentic nature of the, the destination. You might be doing stuff around travel and, and helping people sort of encourage active travel or energy efficient travel using public transport or electric vehicles. And obviously the food and drink side of it is very much about that sort of that local localism, um, ethically produced, but also those that have very low food miles or that, that have uh, sustainability production methods built into it. And that links obviously to the biodiversity, whether it's you know, the, the, the bees to, to pollinate the cherry trees or, or it might be something to do with use of um, uh, uh, the, your ground to encourage more uh, particular types of species and, and birds, um, which obviously help and, and potentially add to the benefit of the, the customer's experience as well. So there's lots within the, the places goals that, that, that businesses, food tourism businesses can engage with. And the planet section is very much about that resource efficiency. It's about saving money. It's about saving resources. It's about low carbon, net zero, reduction of the use of chemicals, finding greener alternatives for many of these products. And, and actually, that there's a lot more uh, eco version of, uh, of, of chemicals and, and other products available now. Um, and a lot of support there out there to find out about it. So that's our, our, our core criteria. All of them, our criteria are actually aligned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So if that's something that you're looking to want to report to on, or if your customers are asking, then we have those alignments. And we also have a standard that's particularly relevant for green meetings. So if you, if you have events or, or meetings on your premises that you, that, that might be a standard you might want to be looking at as well. The process that businesses go through in order to achieve a green tourism standard uh, we have an online portal called Green Check, which helps businesses prepare for an assessment. And it's there so that you can access it 24 seven, whenever you need to, um, if you're on shifts or you've got, you know, you, you're wanting to do it, um, not during work time, then that, that this information is there available to you at any time. It has an interactive dashboard, which has all the goals on it. And it gives you um, information on your real time scoring. So, um, you can see at, at a glance where you are on, on towards your achieving a, a gold, a silver and a bronze. And bronze is, is above 40%, silver is above 65%, and to achieve a gold is above 80%. And, and the reason it's not 100% is because we recognise that many of the criteria uh, might not be applicable to all types of businesses, but also that, as I said, we were on a green journey. So you might have started a measure, but not fully implemented it. So it's always giving you the opportunity to understand that there's ways of continually improving. As I mentioned, the, the criteria, 70-odd uh, criteria, each criteria 
has some information in there as to what you, what it means to implement it, how you can go and implement it, the benefits to your business. And there's uh, some suggested uh, measures under each of those criteria that you could be implementing. And you have to provide information and, 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 and uh, evidence as to how you're actually achieving those measures. And when you're ready for your assessment, you submit for that. And that's when our assessor will be um, talking to you, uh, organizing a Zoom or a Teams call, or if it need be a site visit to check out what you're doing. But uh, very much a, a lot of the information is things that can be found out on your website or through the evidence that you're going to be providing to us. Um, we have a lot of support and information available, and many much of that is built into the, the Green Check portal, whether it's description of the criteria itself, or we have an I function where there's more information and guidance with links to all the relevant um, and useful websites around that particular criteria or around products or templates that you can download to help you with the process. We also have an interactive query system, so you can actually specifically ask us questions and one of the technical team will get back to you within a, a couple of days with information on, and support and, and links to uh, information that will be useful to you. As you work through the portal, you can also build your own bespoke action plan. So at times, if you're not doing a measure, you'll be prompted potentially to add something to your action plan. You can edit it, so you can put in the smart uh, measures I talked about earlier, you can put in you know, who's responsible, you can put in timelines, you can put in a budget against it even. So all of that information can be kept within your action plan. And when you've completed an action, then you can, you can complete that on the action plan. It then goes into the completed tab and your, your records will be updated. And the good thing is about this is that all the information that you provide uh, all the advice that we provide through the query function, anything you add into the action plan, any evidence you provide is stored on the portal for you to access at any time for you to go back and look at what actions did we complete last year, what, what have we got in our action plan for next year. If you've got a new team member starting, then you can show them uh, all the information that's been provided over the, the time that you've been involved with Green Tourism and what you've done in order to achieve your 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 green tourism certification award level so that's how the green portal works um, as i said there's a lot of support we have a team of uh, technically and, and and environmentally qualified assessors and advisors um, they will help with through those support through the, the query function but we've also provide advice and training and webinars where where relevant and, and many years experience of, of a wide range of businesses um, and if we don't know the answer, then we know where to go and find the answer or we will find somebody who, who can give us the answer and lots of case studies and, and support and, and fact sheets um, that we have in our knowledge hub. So there's lots of support there for businesses interested. So today we've been through quite a, 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 a lot of information on how to set up your sustainability strategy. Um, to set up a plan and a policy, we see some great examples of what businesses across Scotland and other ways places have, have implemented and hopefully given you an indication of what you can achieve and how you can look to go to, to something like a certification uh, award like Green Tourism to help promote that to your, to your customers and to your suppliers. Um, so homework is check out those top 10 tips I went through just before um, to give you an, an idea of, of where you can start what you can implement look at starting your plan uh, everyone's on a different place in that green journey you know we're there to help um, developing a policy is good and involving your team and your customers and your suppliers and go out there and get some help and advice um, so I'm hopefully you found that useful um, just to summarize uh, the end of this this webinar this is the last one of a series of four the first three are around sustainable food tourism experiences and how to get started um, one about customer expectations and communications um, identifying the practical changes that you can do in in your in your business um, and hopefully all of those are there available online on the Opportunity Northeast website who is the lead on this project and the funding has been provided through the Scottish Government's Northeast Economic Recovery Skills Fund. Um, if you've got any queries on any of the workshops, then please get in touch with me 
um, or Sandra through the inquiries website uh, email address there. And any of the materials that we've talked about or checklists that you want to have access to um, or any other queries about the project, please contact Elizabeth Macy at Opportunity Northeast. And um, I hope you found them useful. Thank you, Sandra, for all your support. It's been great working with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, everybody, and uh, I hope we speak to you soon. Bye. Bye.